Good evening and welcome to the new episode of Cracking Senses. Today we'll learn how to crack a software in a real show and that software is called Algebra 2 by Eduware. Inside the box you have several discs and there are two versions of the game Algebra Volume 2 and Algebra 1 and we will work with Algebra 1 today. When you want to crack an Apple II software, what do you need? You first need a computer, this one, an Apple II GS, this is a RAM free. The main unit is underneath, you don't see it, and you also need two disk drives. One, the main one, and the second one. The main one will be used to uh, play with the original disc, and the second one will be used to play with the copy. What else do we need? We need a copy disc. This is mine, under the name, the nickname, logo, which I made in 1990, in May 1990, if I'm correct. What else do we need? We need a blank disc, a double-sided one. Why double-sided? Because the original game or program or whatever may be double-sided and this is something that we'll have to check. What else do we need? We also need our ear. Why? Because the noise made by the disc drive when it reads a diskette, a floppy disk, is different when it deals with the DOS 3.3 program or a Prodos one or another kind of software like Serious Titles. So first of all what do we have to do? <coughs> we have to listen to the disk drive sound. So we'll switch on the computer and we will listen to the sound made by the disk drive. Interesting. It has a prompt of the DOS 3.3 operating system and it's so damn slow at loading that I'm pretty sure it's a DOS 3.3 thing. Okay, what is good is that it seems that the uh, original disk is not bad, it can be red, so that's good. What else do we have to do? First of all, we have to learn how the disk is formatted. If this is the standard disk, if it has, let's say, a non disk or off disk protection, non disk is a way to change the uh, way the uh, data is organized onto the disk or uh, of disk protection is a kind of things like a password protection like you have on Caves of Karkhan or uh, titles like uh, the series of Carmen San Diego. So what do we do? We launch our copy disk. We have here a bit copier. We have disk fixer, a disk editor like Moby Disk 2. We also have uh, Disk Muncher uh, Enable Copier. We have the Erdoth uh, Converter that I wrote a long time ago to uh, automatically uh, crack Erdos games by SSI. Uh, the Erdos uh, 3.2 and 3.3. And what else do we have? We have Locksmith 6.3 Fast Disk Backup, which is the fastest way to copy a disk. And Advanced Demuffin 1.4, this is a version uh, modified by the Brain Trust in 1990, uh, 1989, and uh, which includes uh, an option for the boot. You can press uh, either B or uh, P to get the RWTS of a disk just to be uh, able to get it in memory and ease the copy process. First of all, what do we have to do? We will launch or game up, if you, one can call it a game, but I like to call it that way. Uh, the locksmith, the fastest disc copier. 
if you rather press one or two, you can read only the side of a floppy disk. If I press one, I will read the uh, data on the disk one. If I press two, I'll be able to read what is on the second drive. What is important to see is the following. We just see that we have complete columns of A. You know that the standard Apple II disk is divided, or format on disk is uh, divided into uh, the header field and the data field. The header field uh, contains some uh, specific values like D5AA96, followed by some information regarding the volume, the track, the sector, and the checksum, and it has a final uh, marker for the header which is DEAAEB. For the data field, we have the header uh, which is D5AAAD followed by 342 nibbles. What is a nibble? A nibble is normally uh, alphabet. But why do we call that nibble here in the Apple II world? Because this is the way the data is recorded onto a diskette through the controller card and uh, you can write only half bits because the other bits every two bits you have a one it is mandatory to get so if we have a a here that just means that the standard markers for the header field have been changed what is to know also is that a diskette always boot on track zero sector zero and we have a, a. if we have a, a here that means that the system is protected with the change of the final marker of the header field. Why? Because the values are not checked by the routine ROM to boot the diskette, but the header field, the first marker D5AA96, is always checked. So this is interesting to note. What also must be noted is that a standard Apple II diskette has 35 tracks from 00 to 22, 22 in X is uh, 34 plus 1, the 00 equals 35. We also have 16 sectors per track. So you can see here that the diskette cannot be copied. Uh, it is not using a standard format, even though it looks like the data we have here is, um, let's say, the size in terms of tracks and sectors of a standard Apple II disk. What else do we have to check? The number of tracks on a disk. So we will reboot and we will use our beloved friend, the bit copier of uh, copy to plus by central point software. We will use the edit mode on the original drive 2 and we'll start at the last track and we'll go a little bit further. Some drives are able to read up to four more tracks, but it's not standard. And some games programs rely on the extra track, and this is where they hide that protection. A game in France named Transat used that protection, and in the USA one was, I can't recall the name right now, but it's from FTL, and it's a well-known game, and uh, if you can find it, you can put a comment on YouTube, please. So we will study everything, we will read the nibble that I've talked a little bit earlier. The data is read, we put A to analyze the data. You know we have, you can see here that you have standard markers I was talking about a little bit earlier, the 5 a 96 etc. Followed by two 4.4 encoded nibbles for the uh, volume, then uh, BBAA for the track, AA, AA for the sector, and then we have EEFE for the checksum, followed by, the, oh, DAAA, we should have DEAA, the standard nibbles here are DEAAEB, we have DAAA, and uh, frankly don't count on the EB because uh, the final uh, last nibble of the final marker is not always written on the disk. This is, let's say, a bug in the RWTS of uh, an Apple II disk. 
So here we have data, you know it's standard, we have the FFFF, FFFF means that we have sync nibbles, this is for the head to be able to read the correct nibble values. So let's go to the next track. Hola, we have plenty of what I would call garbage, you see, nothing is well organized, etc, etc. So we can see here that we do not have an extra track. What else do we have to see? And check that the game or program is not double sided. So we'll flip it over and reinsert it and reread it from drive 2, from the first track to the last track, and analyze data. It looks like we have the same garbage here, and here, and here, and here. And here, mm. it's getting long, but if you were the, let's say, a good pirate, you will check all tracks just to check that there is no valid data on the side B. Here I can tell you that there is no valid data on the second side. So that, what sh do we have to do? And what can we say now? It is a DOS 3.3 disk. It has 35 tracks. It has, it has 16 sectors. But some values of the markers are changed. Those are not standard. So we'll have to find a way to copy that disk using a program just like the one that was um, present in uh, Nibble, the review in you know, the magazine, the monthly magazine. Or we can also use the one that we have inside our copy disk, which is called Advanced Demofin 1.4. So that once again we reboot. And the game is entry 4. We have two options, as I said earlier. The first one is to pass boot, meaning that I will use my own RWTS routines, or I will use something else, or I can change uh, things in the RWTS present in the system, but otherwise I can press B to boot, meaning that it will simulate a boot of the, uh, these two controller cards or the smart port card because here we are using an Apple 2GS but at the end it's the same it boots and it gets the RWTS of the program we now have or the original disk on drive 1 and we'll put a blank disk in drive 2 and we'll ensure it is well inserted and we'll copy disk we will not change anything because we know that we have a standard disk in terms of tracks and sectors. The disks are inserted, we press return. And what we can see here in that advanced debuffin will copy the program seven tracks each time. And if we have a dot, that means that the copy is well performed. At first, the read is well performed, and if the copy, the write process on the second drive is well performed, then we'll get the same dot. So we'll end until the end of the copy process, and seven tracks multiplied by five passes mean or equals 35 tracks. That's perfect. Now the original is useless. We have a copy of the program on that side. We insert it on the disk drive and reboot. Oops. 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 Oops, we stop that. You know, we have a RWTS, which means read, write, track, and sector, from the original disk, which uses modified markers. And we have 
the same routines here but now we have a standard disk so that next step is to modify the RWTS on the copy to make it believe it is using the standard values so we'll reboot and use a disk editor to modify the information and we will use disk fixer version 4 which is my preferred program for disk editing so what do we do? And that we will read trick the track 0 sector 0 which is the first sector which is loaded onto a diskette and we have from track 0 sector 1 to track 0 sector 9 the RWTF that is put in memory from B7AA00 to BFFF the highest amount of uh, the highest area of memory for those who know the RWTS there are several routines where the data uh, the mar different markers are checked and uh, this is on track 0 sector 2 here you have the routine to write a sector LDAD uh, to write a sector, D5AAD, etc. etc. All nibbles are written, and then you write the final markers, which are DEAAB. No, here we can see that we have DA. That's not normal. So we'll have to change at offset 9E. We go here, we change the DE. Check. And we'll look a little bit below everything is standard here we'll go to the next sector and see that the final markers are checked here compare the A, compare A, A we should have seen compare the E, compare A, A so we'll change at offset 35 what else we have here the routine at uh, 944 uh, to read the header field Zip. and then it has a comparison with compare the A, compare A where we should see compare the E, compare A at offset 91 tac, tac. everything seems to be standard there are also some other places in uh, memory to check here uh, you have a nibble translation table which can include some code in the middle and you have to check it looks like it is standard here you have room for nothing and alpha the routine here is for the rest of the uh, 342 nibbles and the routine to write the header for the, uh, the header field is here it tried the DE, uh, the D5AA96, etc., etc., with the default header, and it heads with the DEAAEB. Oh, so that when you format a disk here or use it to write data, eh, what is quite well is that it is using the standard values of nibbles, so that on the disk it can be used to read but it cannot be used to write or to format I would say to be more precise so that it's a little bit difficult because if you make let's say use a format copy uh, which is called init on DOS 3.3 you will get a different format of the one as you have on the original disk because you know that on both uh, header and data fields the final markers are changed from D E A A E B to D A E A A E B but not here so that you would have got the standard markers on the header field but you would get different markers for the data fields so that a disk that you can format with the routines here cannot be read by the routines in the same RWTS so I would say it is a bug but we don't care. What we want to see is if our program is able to boot. Hmm, great noise. We have the DOS 3.3 prompt.
it is still slow we have the title page and it looks like it is working we'll have to check we'll launch one or two programs here let's say press one for definitions it is dated March 81 wow nearly 34 years ago it's slow it's slow what is a numeral definition sample problem okay half of eight is four does eight refer to a number or a numeral let's say a number right Okay, uh, the digit after 7 is 8, blah, blah blah blah. It looks that it is working fine. We cannot press escape. Or we can. I don't know. To be honest, I haven't read the manual before launching the program. It looks like it is loading the main menu again. Okay, that's good. So, what can we say here? is that we have a protected original disk here and we have an unprotected disk here ah <gasps> it's a shame for the pirate there are things that should be checked uh, when the first of all is are my routines well rewritten secondly can't i find another protection check in the game oh in the program you know that there are some protection that um, are checked later on like a pro code by version soft it is checking for nibble values on the disk and if it can't find them it just uh, hangs uh, let's say 30 seconds after you've uh, started using the assembler and there are things like that for today that's enough we know from experience that the program is cracked and I just hope that you've enjoyed uh, watching this as I've enjoyed making it and uh, maybe we'll do the same operation for an Apple 2 program bye bye